developed. There are two types of photoresist, negative and positive. A negative resist hardens when exposed to light and remains on the wafer when developed. In this run, a positive resist is used. When exposed to light, the resist changes chemically and is removed when developed. The regions of silicon dioxide, now unprotected by photoresist, are then etched. Although acids can be used for etching, most wet chemicals etch in all directions at equal rates, which can result in undercutting of the photoresist. Undercutting could create an inexact transfer of the mask. When a critical fine etch is needed, the wafers undergo a dry etching process called plasma etching. In the plasma chamber, a chemically reactive gas provides free fluorine atoms which react with the exposed silicon dioxide to leave sharp vertical walls. High magnification SEM photographs show the precision of these etched regions. The hardened resist is then removed in a dry process using oxygen plasma, which may include fluorine, followed by hot acid baths. This leaves a stenciled silicon dioxide layer as insulation. Photolithography will be used with each of the subsequent masks in the process. This technique allows us to isolate microscopic regions of the wafer and construct them into components of the electronic circuit. In this way, the transistors and circuits are gradually built a layer at a time. In the ion implanter, dopant ions will bombard the wafers to create N-type regions. The depth of the ion implantation depends on the amount of energy used. Dopant ions are separated from other elements and accelerated to high velocities in a strong electric field. The ions are then driven into the wafers, implanting the exposed silicon regions. The silicon dioxide layer on the wafer blocks the dopants from unwanted regions. Because these wafers are p-type, phosphorus ions, which are n-type dopants, are implanted. Exposing the wafers to high temperatures diffuses the ions deep into the silicon substrate. This creates a well of n-type substrate where the p-channel transistor will be built. If the wafers were n-type, then boron would have been implanted to create p-wells. A new thinner layer of silicon dioxide is regrown and its thickness is carefully monitored and measured. In a deposition furnace, a layer of silicon nitride is deposited over the oxide layer. The nitride layer prevents additional growth of the silicon dioxide layer and protects the region where the transistors will be built. Photoresist is again evenly spread on the wafer and baked in preparation for the next mask. Using a computerized machine,